All I hear is talking, I don't sweat that If they don't trust me, yeah, I respect that If she need on the ride, do I bet that Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that Don't forget that, don't forget that Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that Don't forget that, don't forget that Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is J.H. How you doing, Postal Family? Is everybody good? Is everybody cool, clean, crisp? Are you icky, icky? I read today. I <laughs> like how I do my voice, right? <laughs> okay, what's next? What's next? Oh, yeah. But first, go to my other channel. Pin comment. I'll wait. Okay, I waited long enough. Did you click? And did you click subscribe? Do me that favor. I don't ask y'all for nothing. This is the one time I ask y'all to help me out. Please, 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 please. All right, cool. Uh, this, today, I'm gonna be talking about um, some topics and that I don't really have the answers to these questions and everybody has these questions so i'm gonna just go through a smorgasbord and because this is a postal community i'm gonna just assume that somebody on here that watches me has the answer i got postmasters watching me plan managers watching me i got clerks union clerks everybody watches so somebody please chime in you ain't gotta say who you are just give an answer because these are real questions all right these are from fellow postal workers and I understand things are different nationwide but people want to at least know the direction that they need to head into if they have one of these scenarios okay first I'm going to tell a little story uh about a lady that uh emailed me and it is probably one of the most disturbing things and I didn't get a chance to talk to her yet and I'm not going to disclose any names but you know how you guys have these issues where you feel like, you know, the union's in bed with management. We've heard these stories a million times over. I get it. I get it. We'll get to that question in a minute. But, you know, the ladies in the uh, woman's uh, locker room, then all of a sudden, what happens? A male shop steward walks in to the woman's restroom while she's in there, the locker room. And then she turns around and she's recording and she sends me the video. Now, I know this can go somewhere to the moon, so I'm not gonna really disclose information behind it, but I guarantee you that there's gonna be some repercussions. So you heard what I said. She recorded it, guy walked in and she was like, oh, you know, what are you doing in here? And he started that and he's like, well, I'ma just leave. And he, I mean, he sounded like a fool. What man just walks into the woman's restroom after knowing that there's a woman in there the locker room or whatever it is that is totally disgusting what happens in that case now i don't want people's information about oh he should whoop his ass we understand that he needs an ass whooping but what steps should she take at this point that's number one Number two is uh, the whole union in bed with management. There's a bunch of people in different stations all around this country that say, hey, I can't go to my union representative because, you know, the union uh, shop steward is sleeping with the supervisor. What happens in that scenario? This is a real life question. I mean, I'm giving you the, the dirty right now because people ask me these questions and I don't have those answers. What do they do in that scenario? Because they want representation and the union is supposed to just simply uh, follow the contract and enforce what's in the contract. Right. But if they have an interest in management that happened to write the person up, how is that? That considered a conflict of interest. How does somebody go and get around that? Somebody please tell me. Hmm? Please tell me. OK, that was that. That's another question. So um, what happens when you know somebody gets ill and they can't come to work right and they can't come to work and the doctor says hey you're you got to be out of work for you know four or five months or whatever and they don't have all that sick leave accumulated not enough annual leave accumulated there in the first couple years stuff happens they get in a car accident whatever it is and they want to request donations right from their little area what's the process behind it 
What's the process? It's a long, drawn out process, and it shouldn't be. They're supposed to go to their manager, man, they're supposed to pull up a form. They're supposed to fill out this form, for, send the form up to HR. But can somebody give some details behind that as well? I mean, I personally know that my ex-wife is going through that scenario right now. I'm helping her out, but it's not my place to help her out with that. I want to know how come the management isn't doing due diligence in her scenario, in her situation. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, what happens when, you know, you have a union president that doesn't, for some reason, doesn't get along with the people that he's supposed to represent? How does that work out? If the union president isn't uh, doing what they're supposed to do and they're always at a constant battle with their own members that pay them, but nobody wants to step up and take that place and they're just sitting in there. What, what happens at that point? Because the person's obviously going to feel like they're um, invincible if nobody's going to challenge them. You know, I, I see it all the time where there's union shop stewards or union representatives that uh, they come in. I'm not saying all because it's not all, definitely not all. But, you know, they get to take these unnecessary uh, leaves and trips and and they get to call out whenever they want. They challenge people when they come back to work and they're put on a different, uh, you know, they're not on the overtime list or whatever it is. I mean, it's, I call it self-serving, but they they do have some terminology. And if somebody can, you know, write that terminology out, you know, in layman terms, so other people can read this. Because again, these are just questions that come my way. I don't have the answers for every question. I have an idea, but I don't have all the answers to these questions. Um, how come the union doesn't constantly or consistently post information about what goes on? I know you guys say that they're supposed to be, you know, having union meetings every month. But when they have union meetings, they have bullet points that they have to stick to. But is there a time that the members can come and voice their grievances and say, hey, this is what we want to know. And so, you know, so on and so forth. Um, how come on the website I go on? I forgot which one it was. It was either the mail handlers website or the, the National Association of Letter Carriers website. And I go to Hot Topics and that thing is from a year and a half ago. How come these things are not constantly monitored and updated on a regular basis? So that information that I dig for is not readily available to union dues, uh, union members that are paying dues. I I'm just curious on what is it that they should be doing or is there a way to rectify that? I know you guys have a podcast thing coming out, but with podcasts, even with the post office, the podcast is not going to tell you the dirty. That's why people come to this channel. They want to hear the dirty. They want to hear the back news or whatever the case is. And again, I'm just a truck driver. At the end of the day, I just, you know, well, not even a truck driver, but, you know, I, I just get information that everybody across this nation passes to me. And I just happen to have a platform where I'm able to translate it a little with a little bit of animation. Um... And trust me, and I, I want you guys to look into my beady eyes. If the post office was running efficiently, people would not be on here listening to Jay talk. People would not have questions for Jay. They would not be saying, hey, Jay, this. Hey, kid, I get, uh, just one small question of that. If it was running efficiently, we would not have all these people asking a stranger to get information. People wouldn't be telling this stranger about physically being assaulted by other managers. They wouldn't be coming to me to tell me that. How does the culture change and what can we do to change it? Not just words. We want some step by step details on what can be done to change just the culture, not the post office. Forget about that. The joy got that thing on wrap, but just the people, the culture. You know, I work right. A, I, OK, I'm in an office and I'm right across from a big uh, conference room. I see they have supervisors in there now getting training. But what type of training are they training these supervisors for now? Are they learning human skills? Because being a supervisor and a manager requires psychology. I know I took culinary arts and restaurant management. Um, and I learned psychology because you have to learn to deal with people when you're in management. 
a whole course in psychology. And I don't think that the people that they put up in management have the psychological capability or capacity to deal with all the different types of people that they have to encounter. I mean, can you imagine a manager having to deal with this asshole here? Because I'll run them in circles. I'll talk about the same thing in 15 different ways and have somebody confused. But not, And then they got to deal with the hundreds of thousands of me. Just think about that. Are they psychologically and mentally capable to deal with all these people? You know, because they'll end up breaking if they don't have that capacity. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And if you do have some different questions, because I don't want to stretch this out that I might not have touched on, you know, drop the comment because I read every comment or just email me. But again, with that first comment that I made about the lady in the locker room, my God, what kind of like... <sighs> See, I got to keep my personal opinion out of this one. But there has to be steps that can be taken to have an individual like that removed. OK, not just moved to another spot and then brought back or this person has to, you know, we'll put you on a different bid. No, 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 no. The bad actors need to go. At the end of the day, the bad actors need to go. And I'm not wrong about saying that. Well, the union has to fight for everybody. Come on now, the union, I understand that to a degree, but when is enough enough? Somebody please step up, give some detailed information, help the postal community out. If you have the knowledge, share it. You zip me? This is JH. This went from a eh to pretty deep, didn't it? We out. Unexpected expenses stressing you out? Get the money you need now with Loans for Feds, a program designed specifically for federal employees. Bad credit is not a problem. Application is fast and easy with same-day approvals. Apply now.